The truth is, Eastern Europeans aren't actually mean. It's just that you guys are too sensitive. Hi guys, I'm Francis Orfin and I'm from Latvia, which is in the Baltics. The Baltics, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia. And um, I'll be talking about Eastern Europe today. And I count Latvia into Eastern Europe. However, sometimes people do say that it's more Northern Europe. And although if we look at the map, I would say that like geographically we are more like northern europe historically though we are very eastern european and we share a lot of common history and common traditions with eastern europeans rather than countries like sweden and norway in this video i'll be mostly talking about latvia because i'm most knowledgeable in the latvian history so you can apply this history to other countries in europe i personally had never given much thought to the way eastern europeans treat people around us how we treat strangers and how we interact with each other because i've lived in eastern europe my whole life i've never known any other way of living you know i found out that apparently <laughs> apparently the way we act isn't normal in other parts of the world only a few years ago on uh, tiktok or youtube where people were sharing their experience of culture shocks when they moved to latvia Cultural shock I had when I moved to Latvia. About the cultural shock I had when I moved from my home country, Cameroon to Latvia. Yeah, the first one is about Latvians not greeting people on the way. I don't know why, but Latvians don't greet people on the way. Like even if they see you, they will not say hi or they will not just smile at you. But uh, in my home country, when you see somebody on the way, if you know the person or not, you will just say hi to the person or you can just smile at the person. Yeah, that's how it is. You can go watch other videos from these creators. You can also just search more online about this topic because there really are a lot of people talking about this. So yeah, in this video, we will go through a brief history of uh, Latvia and how that's influenced the way we act today. And what are the positives and negatives of being as guarded as we are in this part of the world? And why is that? <laughs> Latvia throughout their history has been constantly occupied by other countries like Sweden, Germany, Russia, and uh, we've always been the country that gets occupied. We've never really occupied any other country around us. And this is one of the reasons that has made us wary of strangers because we've been constantly attacked by other nations. So we're very like, so we're very guarded. Following the Russian Revolution, Latvia declared its independence and became an independent country. And for around 20 years, we were living our amazing, fire, incredible, free lives, building our economy, trading with other countries, until the Molotov von Ribbentrop Pact, which divided Eastern Europe and, well, mostly Eastern Europe, as well as some other countries, uh, in half by Germany and Russia. Uh, that's how Latvia became part of the USSR, along with other countries like Lithuania, Estonia, Poland. And now we're going to go a bit more in depth in how USSR controlled its citizens, which is one of my favorite topics, guys. I love talking about it. There really is only one way how you can actually control a really big group of people, and that would be fear and ussr they're pretty good at fear <laughs> they're pretty good at fear let me tell you that there are mass deportations of latins to siberia and there were interrogations done by the kgb which meant that anyone you know could be informing for the kgb you never know who it is and there have been stories when years later after the ussr has ended when they finally found like the documents people find out that oh my uncle or brother or sister were actually informing. It could have been anything. It could have been an illegal drink or an illegal magazine. It could have been like a book that was illegal. You could have just said something that was lightly disrespectful of the regime. A lot of other dictatorships also had spies who would spy on people for them. And for example, according to the Wilson Center, the secret police of Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu recruited thousands of children to spy on school friends, parents, and teachers, according to communist-era archives. They showed that the security blackmailed children across Romania into becoming informers in the late 1980s, as the whiff of liberation in the Soviet bloc prompted Ceausescu to tighten his grip on the country. And there's actually been a story of a child. This is... I don't know how truthful this is because this story was told to me by my Latvian teacher. So we're just going to have to trust her on this. I actually don't have a source for this, guys. 
But a story she has told me was how once a kid had uh, told one of his teachers or one of his classmates about how, oh, we have so many factories, but we don't really get all the things that we produce. They get shipped through the USSR. That's kind of sad. Someone informed on the little kid. And then his parents got very, very quickly fired from their jobs, which, by the way, was a very, very light punishment. To get fired, it was like a good punishment. Like, oh my god, I only got fired. Like, there are way worse scenarios. Like, one of my favorite buildings in Latvia. Favorite in, like, a history way. Like, I love going there because it's a museum. But uh, it's a truly scary place. And some people are actually scared of it until today. But because I haven't actually lived in the USSR, I'm not scared. And that would be the corner house which was the Cheka or the building where all the interrogations were done by the KGB, where people were temporarily imprisoned before getting shipped off to Siberia and to different gulags, or they were just killed there. This is what made people very secretive and quiet. And until today, a lot of the older generations still have the mindset of don't discuss politics outside of the house, don't say anything disrespectful about the government. You don't know what might happen. Although we have been independent, again, from the USSR since early 90s, it still lingers for older people. My grandmother once told me that you should never say anything disrespectful about the government. You don't know what might happen. Your parents might lose their jobs. Which is silly. That is genuinely silly and that wouldn't happen because we don't live in the Soviet Union anymore. But it's because she's lived so many years of her life in this fear that giving her opinion on something lightly controversial might actually cost her her life or her job or it might put her family members in trouble. That's why a lot of people would only share their deepest concerns and fears with their family members or no one at all. A lot of people simply would not discuss that Latvia had ever been an independent country before the Soviet Union. Of course, the flag was banned and any symbol of the country was basically banned. And of course, no criticism of the system was allowed ever of any kind. That's why most of the things were kept silent. A lot of people who were exiled or sent off to Siberia or deported, they were not discussed. They were not even mentioned. You couldn't talk about them. Their pictures were hidden, burnt. Everything was kept quiet. Above all, you couldn't trust anyone because anyone could be informing on you. Anyone could twist your words into something else. That was our brief history class. And now we're going to see how that has actually impacted people today and how are Latvians and Eastern Europeans nowadays. Because the dark shadow of the USSR is still following our footsteps. The past has made us very resilient. We don't get offended very much. We have very thick skin. We, I mean, some people say that we're quite depressing. And I mean, I would... <laughs> I wouldn't agree. I would not agree. But like, I would say that we are very serious. We don't just smile randomly. We don't greet strangers. That's very weird. That is considered very weird behavior in Latvia. If you greet a stranger, if you talk to someone on the bus, you will be um, looked at as weird. People will be like, oh, which is very funny. Like genuinely, if anyone starts talking to me on the street, I get scared. I'm like, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Get away from me. What do you want from me? <laughs> like, no one ever will talk to you on the street just to be like, oh, isn't it a beautiful day? Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. If they are not a drunk, then they will not talk to you. So yeah, we approach all strangers, even if they could be very kind people. And even if they just want to ask us for help or ask us for directions, we approach everyone with reluctance because of our trust issues caused by the Soviet Union, guys. Or Soviet trauma. Funny thing I've heard is how... Um, people are not used to the fact that trains and buses are silent in Latvia. If you're on a bus with your friend, you will talk to your friend or anyone you know. But if you're on a bus with strangers, it's silent. No one talks to anyone. It's literally just pure silence. It's honestly, it's honestly very, very, very depressing sometimes. But like, you know, and this is one of the things that countries like the US and uh, UK or just Western European countries don't exactly understand they see this as a sign of coldness and disdain, but it's not. It really isn't. We don't hate you. We don't hate you. We're just very, very careful 
with who we let into our circle, who we talk to, who we let in in our lives. I would say there are both positives and negatives to this. I mean, sure, you could say that it's very cold, that it's not very kind of us to do that, to act like that. However, I do think there are positives to this. We are very blunt and concrete. We're always straight to the point. As Americans say, we don't beat around the bush. We don't, we won't like, we won't be like, oh, so it's such a great weather today. Oh, it's so great. Oh yeah. No, we won't do that. We, if we call you, it's going to be, hey, so what are you doing this weekend? Can I borrow your car? I will pay you back and I'll buy you like a huge cake. We're dedicated. We're not like, we're not going to be like, so listen, there's this problem I have. My car broke down. I wonder if there's anyone who could possibly help me with that. We would never do that. We would never do that. It would be straight, instantly. I need your car. Can you please give it to me? I'm literally begging. I'm on my knees right now. And as much as that seems brutal, we don't indulge in ingenuine how are yous and uh, oh, how is the family? How is the kids? If we ask you how you are, we actually mean it. We're not going to ask that to the lady at the store, to the random man at the bus stop. We will only ask that to a friend or to a family member who we truly care about. And I personally think that gives it more meaning because you don't feel pressure to always say that I'm good, I'm fine, it's great. Because if someone cares about how you actually feel, you feel way more free to actually express how actually, no, life's been shit lately. And I think that's way more meaningful than just always throwing different how are you's around which is something americans do because they tend to treat everyone with kindness and sure kindness is good but i also feel like it's really special to ask someone how are they really doing and how are they really feeling when you care about them rather than just being like oh yeah and not actually listening and giving a shit we seek shelter in our loved ones because of the oppression we faced we've always been very close with the people who we care about i mean of course this depends on the person this really depends on the person there are people who have very very big circles of friends and some who are very small ones but we really value the relationships we have we care about our family members we care about our friends and we have different ways of showing how we care. I mean, for the older generations, it's definitely cooking food. My grandmother, she is going to show up to my house with like 17 different little burtsinhas of food. And it's just going to be everything <laughs> you could ever imagine. We're not very open. Like, we don't really openly say how we feel. We do it more by our actions. We will like make food for other people. We give a lot of presents. We have a lot of celebrations and we like to celebrate together. And I would say that once you get to know an Eastern European person or a Latvian person, we really aren't mean and cold and distant. We're truly very happy people. I mean, have you been to Midsummer? I mean, you probably haven't. But like, if you have been to Midsummer, bro, during Jan is the only time of the year when everyone is friends with everyone. Suddenly, I'm friends with my neighbors. I'm friends with everyone. I'm friends with everyone at the store because we're all celebrating. Everything's great. Our dark fast has also made us very, very um, funny. We're very sarcastic, <laughs> truly. We're very sarcastic people. And we also tend to bring up really, really dark, heavy subjects out of nowhere. We don't have like a filter. If we have an issue, we're going to instantly bring it up. And that's something I really like as a person because when I'm talking to someone, believe me, I could not care less. I could not care less if you like that the sun is out, if you like that the grass is green. I want to know what is your opinion on the censorship of books in the world? Like, tell, tell me your opinion. I don't care about the weather. Lastly, I'd like to bring up how sarcastic we are as people. We have very dark humor. And I'd want to share a quote from my grandmother's. So imagine fields, hometowns, buildings, whoa. We're driving in my grandmother's hometown. She points to a lake and she goes, oh, you see that lake? Yeah. I almost drowned there once. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> that's just how it is here, guys. Um, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. So thank you for being here. Um, once again, I'd like to say that this is only my opinion and like my experience. And of course, people are different. I know people who are Latvian and who are very, very open. 
I also know people who genuinely hate being around any human being at all. So <laughs> people are different. But I think that's what makes it very interesting to live in the world, genuinely. Please share your opinion on this. I really want to know. What do you think is weirder, to sit in a completely silent bus or to greet every single stranger on the street, guys? <laughs> if they're not a little kid or like an old grandmother, uh-uh, no smile from me, no emotion from me. I'm staring at a wall in the opposite direction. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Uh